Who wouldn't want to hit it out here just a little bit longer, straighter, closer? Most importantly, closer, I think, if you're going to score. Of course you would. Well, I got approached by a company recently that has a device that claims to do just that. And it's got the backing of some big time tour players like Annika, VJ, Bryson DeChambeau. These are some major household names. So of course it piqued my curiosity there as well. This is called the DeWiz. And this little device is a wearable that's gonna help you train your swing and help you really dial it all in. So full disclosure, DeWiz is sponsoring this video, but as always, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I like and dislike about this product. There's always a few gripes and DeWiz has no say in the editorial content of this. But I thought this device was so exciting that I would be remiss to not tell you about it. So there are four amazing things this device does to really help you dial in your golf swing. And I'm going to walk you through all four here today. But it does tempo training, it fixes common swing faults, it's going to help you gain more distance, and it's going to help you gap your wedges. So we're going to deep dive, show you all those features here today. And I will say this, if you are considering buying the DeWiz for yourself here or for a friend who is looking to improve their golf game, I'm going to leave a code down below where you can save $50 off of this device. That's exclusive to the Let's Play Through community. So thank you DeWiz for providing that for us. All right, let's take a look at this thing and what it can do. This device is super easy to set up. Literally, you strap it on your wrist. It's lightweight, so it doesn't get in the way of the swing. And you don't need to fiddle with anything. You just put it on and literally launch the app and you can start working with this thing. The first thing we're gonna work on here is something that if you've been watching this channel, you've noticed most likely over the last six months. I've gained well over one club's worth of distance, somewhere between 10 and 15 yards is the distance gain that I've got throughout the bag. And it's the result of really one simple thing that all of you can do, which is just getting into a better, more flexible position and getting a little more height on your backswing. I'm gonna use the DeWiz here so that we can show you exactly visually how it works. All right, so the first thing we're gonna work on is length of backswing. Now this is gonna help us both measure and really visually see what we're doing with the golf swing. So I'm gonna take a swing that was much closer to the type of swings I was taking in the spring. Length of backswing 48.2 inches. Okay, 48.2, it's actually probably a little better, a little better than what I was doing in the spring. And you can literally see it on screen how far you're taking the club back. That's the down the line view. You've got a face on view. So I'm getting it back, but I can do better than that. All right, you also have a target view just in case you wanna see that. I like the down the line view for this one in particular. And what we're gonna do is just try to lengthen the backswing and see how that changes things. So my club head speed 77, which is very close to what it was back in the spring. The carry is 140. This is a seven iron, by the way, that I'm swinging. Total distance 153. Now, the only thing I'm gonna change, I'm not gonna change my tempo or how hard I'm trying to swing the club. I'm literally just gonna take the club back and see how that changes things. All right, so same seven. swing there. Also push that one off to the right just a little bit, which is something we're gonna work on next. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing at a time. That one definitely went a little further. So I got my club head speed to 82 miles per hour, carried 155, total 167. I can still do better, but you can see there the length of that backswing, 53.7, and there's our replay. A little better plane there too. But again, we're gonna fix that here in just a second. I'm gonna take one more swing, again, just to show you how dramatically little changes can make and getting more flexible can help you gain those extra yards you've been looking to gain, especially as you get older. All right, so there I really 6. felt like I took it back all the way, 54.6. Again, that's gonna to lead to faster club head speed, but I wasn't trying to hit it any further. Club head speed was 82, carried 162, total 175. So again, just changing the length of my backswing, I'm adding considerable yardage there. Now, one thing in this swing that you're gonna see is I'm struggling with coming over the top, and I'm gonna show you what I did there. I'm kinda, that's the over the top move there where my transition, I'm coming down almost chopping wood. This is another thing that you can use the DWiz 
to work on. So it's called transition. And again, I'm gonna take one normal swing to establish the baseline and then we're gonna to try to improve that swing. Transition plus 3.7 inches. You heard that little beep. My transition was off. So again, taking a look at this swing, taking it back, and I came over the top there. And oftentimes that leads to those shots that are spurting off to the right. So we're trying to fix that. That one did happen to draw. But uh, oftentimes if you're missing them right, you're probably coming over the top like that. I am here. So what we're gonna try to do is change our transition here for swing two. I'm really gonna work on shallowing the club. Now, how am I working on that? Well, a couple of things. First of all, I'm, I'm just working on trying not to rotate my body up here. But really, this is something I actually learned from Mr. Short Game. It's called turning the screws. And I'll try to link it down below if I can. But it's basically a method to keep yourself on plane and to shallow that swing. So as I come down and make my transition, I'm really thinking about turning my wrist down. All right, and getting into a much more powerful position at impact. Let's see if we can do it. What's great is we, we're gonna be able to measure it and get instant feedback on if we're doing it right or not. Minus zero wow, point I did it three. first time. <laughs> now I overdrew that one because I really tried to overdo that one. But as you can see, much better on plane. That green plane is almost tracing that blue line as I came through the ball. So using this device has really helped me get myself into a much more powerful place at impact, which again is leading to more yards. It's so nice to have a tool that you get direct instantaneous feedback on. This thing works really well for that. All right, the next thing we're gonna work on here is tempo. If you look at the best golfers in the world, they've all got a nice smooth swing. That's kind of how announcers on television refer to it, like a sweet, smooth swing. Ernie Els, they called him Big Easy. It looked easy because he had a beautiful tempo. Freddie Couples, VJ, some other great examples of guys that have just wonderful, beautiful tempo, and it looks effortless. So what we're gonna do here is bounce into the tempo mode. And what we're looking for here is a ratio of how quickly you bring that club back to how quickly you bring that club down. Ideally, to really be in the zone of where you wanna be, about 2.7 to three is probably a good place to be. All right, three to one, a lot of people will say is ideal. I happen to be just a little bit quicker and it works for me around 2.8. Let's see, I'm gonna take a swing here and we'll see what my tempo actually is. Tempo ratio 2.9 to 1. Okay, 2.9 there. All right, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change my tempo. And I'm gonna do something that a lot of amateurs I've seen do. They just take a little too much, they pause up at the top and then they pull the trigger. That leads to inconsistent results. Let me try that one more time. One point five to one. Well, <laughs> there's what one point five to one will do. Contact pretty bad, also a much weaker shot and I basically thin that one. So again, using the DeWiz here, you can really work on your tempo and getting it close as possible to that three to one ideal ratio. Now, the last thing that we're gonna work on here is called dist wedges. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take out a 54 degree wedge here. We're literally going to take a few swings that are going to help us set some gears. That's what DeWiz calls it, gears. But basically it's helping you get into that quarter, half, three quarter, full swing mode. You're gonna take three swings and then it's gonna average things. So what we've done here is we've actually set some gears. We've got gear one, which is basically gonna be our quarter swing, 31.1 inches, gear two, our half swing, 39, gear three, 46.9, that's our three quarter swing and our full swing about 52 inches. All right, so now that we've got the gear set, we can literally start to dial in how far we hit wedges. And if you wanna drop strokes on the course, if you're that middle handicapper looking to get down into single digits, this is one of the main things between this and putting 
If you can dial your wedge distances in, you're gonna drop two, three, or maybe more strokes out on course each round. All right, so now we can actually go ahead and practice this. We're gonna select our gear. I'm gonna go with a three quarter swing here, which is gear three for me. Target 46.9 inches. So our target's 46.9, again, that's how far we're taking the club back. Now, if I'm hitting my full swing about 100 to 105, my three quarter swing should be around 90, 95, something like that. But we'll see what it happens and we'll really start to learn how far we hit our three quarter shots once we do this. Length of back So that swing, was about a three quarter swing, which inches. is why we got that audible visual confirmation there. 46.9 is how far I took it back. And how far did that go? Yeah, 94 yards. All right, I'm gonna do one more here. Forty-six. All right, forty-six point nine was what we did. Forty-six was the target, so perfect. How far did that one go? Ninety-two yards. All right, so there you go. I've really dialed in and I've gapped that wedge with a three-quarter swing. My fifty-four degree wedge with a three-quarter swing should be. 93 yards. We'll split the difference there between 90 and 95. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the gear. We're gonna change the gear to a half gear. Target 39 inches. 39 inches, that's my half swing gear. As I was going here with my full swing, here with my three quarter swing, about here is my half swing. I'm guessing it's gonna be around 85 yards, but let's find out. 41.4 inches. inches. Our target there was 39. Our actual length was 41.4. How far did that go? 84 yards. So there you go. Of course, I know my wedges pretty well because that's, that's my whole golf game. I've got to know that well because I don't drive the ball and strike the ball as good as some of these other guys, but my short game is excellent. And that's because I know my numbers. 38.1. There we go, 38.1. Again, our target there was 39. A the total there, 83 yards. So again, I know that I've got things dialed in. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and go to that first gear, which is my one quarter swing, target my 25% swing, if you inches. will, which is just a little bit more than a chip shot for me. That's probably gonna be about a 60 yard shot, something like that, let's find out. Length of backswing 33.3 inches. All right, so again, we nailed the quarter swing there. Total distance 75 yards, it carried 67. So a little bit more than I thought, and that's good to know. You always learn something when you do this. Take one more. 25.7. So that one I didn't take far enough back. That one went 55 yards. Let me do that one more time. There we 32. go. 32.8. 32.8. That one carried 62 yards. So there you go. With a 54 degree wedge, I've just completely gapped my wedge. Full shot, 105, three quarter shot, 95 ish, 85 yards with that half swing and 65 yards with the quarter swing. Super important to know. So that's the amazing thing that this thing can do. And when you pair it with a simulator, even if it's something like a Garmin R10, a Rapsodo, it doesn't have to be super expensive. You're gonna really dial in your wedges, your tempo, all of those things, and then get immediate visual feedback. I love this device for practice mode, but it also works out on a golf course. The DeWiz is the first device that's actually been approved for PGA Tour Play. So literally there are tour players out there that are using this in competition and you are able now to use it in tournament or competition. The difference is that you cannot get immediate feedback on course. You're gonna to have to analyze this after the fact, otherwise you're cheating. But it's really nice after a round of golf to be able to look and see if what you're doing here in the practice facilities is translating out on the golf course. All right, so let's wrap things up here and talk about the pros and cons of the DWiz device. 
I will say that I think it's one of the most powerful tools for really training your swing out there, and it does it so effortlessly. The fact that this little light device just sits on your wrist and measures all this data, it's really mind blowing to me. And not only that, the data they're providing is extremely accurate and most importantly, it's actionable. In fact, this app will give you ideas and ways to improve and fix some of the common swing faults out there. It's all built into the app, so I really love that. I love that this thing actually has an on course mode. So not only can you practice with this thing, but you can take it out on course and then digest all of those good and bad swings post round and see what you're doing right and how you're improving along the way. The other thing I'll say is the battery life. Since I've had this device, I really haven't had to think about charging the battery. This thing seems to last a very long time. Now there's no perfect piece of technology out there. So there are a couple of cons here that we'll talk about. The first one being the fact that someone like me who has a very specific pre-shot routine where I waggle the club a few times and then I slide it in and take it back without a pause. The DeWiz device, you need to have about a one second still pause before you pull the trigger. And that changed my pre-shot routine. Maybe for better, maybe for worse, I don't know, but it does change it. So that's something you've got to think about. The other thing I'll say, it's a very small issue, is just the aesthetics. It's not necessarily my personal favorite aesthetics for a device. But again, that's very subjective. All right, let's talk about price because that's gonna be a big issue for a lot of folks out there. This is not a cheap device. $699 is the retail price. Again, I've got that $50 coupon code if you wanna save some money. But that is gonna scare a lot of folks. A couple things I'll say though is number one, there's no subscription, so there's not ongoing money you have to pay for this device for upkeep, anything like that. And it's one complete system. You don't have to unlock different tiers, so love that. The other thing I'll say is if you're considering buying a brand new driver or buying a device like this, it's really gonna help you fix your swing. I think something like this is actually a better investment in the long term. All in all, really solid with what DeWiz has built here. I'm a huge fan and I hope you get a chance to try it for yourself. I also hope you hit subscribe on this video. Keep up with all the latest and greatest golf technology that's rolling out here at the end of 2023 and into 2024. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I'll catch you back real soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.